Welcome, everybody, to episode 64 of the First Circuit Podcast. We have our host, Biter. Lark. Ian. Greetings. Larsh. Hey, Bob. And myself, the sick bastard who went to MechCon and came back. So tonight's episode is going to concentrate on MechCon and what we experienced. PGI's contribution to MechCon, new mech holiday bonus, and everything in between. Catalyst Games Labs and what's coming out from Catalyst Games Labs. Hairbrain Schemes, Flashpoint, and Jordan vs. Mitch Battle. Tonight we're going to have Biter talk a little bit more because I can't talk whatsoever. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm sick. Go ahead, Biter, take it off. Go, Thanks, Biter. Vroom, vroom, I'm a plane. Vroom, vroom. <laughs> <laughs> all right um so yeah uh, we uh just re- had metcon i think me and old bob attended along with of course uh bat duck lush ian did you uh watch the stream or anything like that no i didn't have time i was doing uh that game jam contest all weekend so i, I missed out sadly i caught the um Catalyst games presentation which was pretty cool except oh, yeah. for the camera which i might talk about later and i just caught up on the pgi stuff mm-hmm. all right um uh, i mean uh i was going to ask uh, what were your guys impressions on metcon Lash, of course wasn't <laughs> yeah. not many impressions i assume not many In... just, just from passing from my heard. i mean i've i've got some serious impressions about the stream oh but that's about it I, I basically th- um it it felt a bit more professional than last time. Oh, yeah. I yeah, think Sean and um, Darren did a better job at moderating stuff. But mm-hmm. the camera stuff for the stream was still kind of very much disappointing. For example, yeah. you had um, the Kettle's people show up their new box set cover art. And there was a camera guy standing right in front of it with his camera filming the box art. But the stream was still on the overhead camera showing everything. Mm-hmm. Well, that's yeah, I, they, I, just, they just didn't switch, and I was sat in front of a monitor and screamed at it, and I was like, "Just show me the picture." <laughs> I, I could just see you screaming at your monitor, going, "Show me that picture!" <laughs> that's funny. I want to see it. It's beautiful. Show it to me. The artwork yeah. was good. I, I'm assuming, at least at the con, like you know, they have projected screens up in the background, and that was what the stream is mostly seeing. And yeah, they um. There was a lot of hiccups here and there where <clears throat> they weren't really sure which I think they just weren't sure which ones to switch to. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and uh, there's some really sad moments like at least um what was it uh in hairbrain schemes, you know, when they're doing that match and uh the fight um uh, they do the, the at the very end they're doing a QA and uh, Mitch uh, gets the killing blow <laughs> yeah. whilst they're answering questions and he just you know he sort of does a big huge dramatic jump on the sta- you know to the front of the stage going yeah and I'm just looking at the projector thing a bit as well and it's just you know it's fo- it's focused on Jordan answering the oh, question. Oh they didn't show that? I didn't realize that. that. That that's that's my guess. I didn't I haven't actually seen the stream. Oh come but on, you've already spoiled it for me. Uh, yeah my 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 guess is um <laughs> yeah, that they didn't see it. That they just hear him yelling in the background. Yeah. Oh, jeez. <laughs> so, so by the quick question, Mitch actually won a game of BattleTech. Yes, he did. Yes. Um, both of them wow. called up assistance. Like they, they got their own <laughs> <laughs> advisors. Yeah, they got Rockney, which is a pretty good player for BattleTech. Uh-huh. Yeah, the highlight for me for this MechCon was just like last MechCon, Hairbrain Schemes putting on a brilliant show. Uh, with Mitch and Jordan doing a 1v1 uh, uh, slappy fight on Battletech. Yeah. yeah, I think the highlight for me was actually meeting everyone that I played Battletech or MechWarrior with. It was, a lot, it was a lot of fun meeting everyone and being part of a community. To, damn, I can't even talk. But being part of a community like that, just meeting all the different streamers was awesome. I loved it. Yeah, um, to give my overall impression, so I was like, yeah, sure, if if you're attending the con, a lot of the attraction is just meeting the people there, maybe playing some demos. Yeah. But otherwise, at least uh, you're not missing out too much if you're actually watching the stream. But watching the stream, even, I mean, what is there? There's the finals for competitive, if you really <laughs> like that, which I guess there might be one or two of you out there. Hello. <laughs> um, <laughs> and otherwise, there's like... Unlike last year, there wasn't that many big announcements. It's like, 
uh, Battletech is, uh, oh, hey, we just came up with Flashpoint. Yep, I know. Um, and uh, PGI is like, oh, yeah, MechWarrior 5 is still trundling along. Here's a demo, I guess. Oh, yep, hmm. okay. <laughs> it's been delayed till, was it September or whatever? Of, yeah, uh, yeah, September. So it's still, it, it's been pushed even further down the line. It's even further away. Um, uh, Catalyst Game Labs are like, yeah, we really wanted to have the box set here, but we don't. I was so, so pissed off at that too because I wanted to purchase it there. And then they 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 um what is it they they have the new books sure but I don't think they even have the maps was it yet I think no maps maps weren't out yet yeah it's just a lot of uh you know in the future we'll have stuff like this <laughs> and it's yeah. like okay yeah I heard about the I heard about the box set last year <laughs> and I think Jeez. maps last year as well <laughs> much of the same content from last year yeah yeah yeah. So at least on the side of the studios, you know, giving giving you uh, giving the audience a lot to be hyped about. I'm not really sure that they did a, as good a job as last year, oddly enough. Um, and of course, on PGI's front, uh, what was it? They talked across MechWarrior Five, uh, saying it's <laughs> in the far future. And in MechWarrior Online, they just had a bit of a ramble about uh, what was it? Some um, faction warfare, them, which they've been rambling about for you know months or so. You know, we've we've been covering it for weeks on end. <laughs> Yeah, I no, mean, like you, you forget about the most important part, by the public okay. service announcement: play a game on December twenty seventh. Oh yeah, well actually, we'll, oh, go yeah, yeah, yeah. we'll go through that. Like we'll go through that. Well, yeah, we might as well go into the bits and pieces that interest us about Metcon. And yeah, the holiday bonus, uh, well, has returned. I think uh, again, last year was the first holiday bonus where if you yep. play on one day in December. Uh, you get two two hero mechs, two new hero mechs of the uh, PGI's own original mechs. This time, though, it's uh, of the new mech, uh, a hero mech of it, and I think the Warhammer 2C hero mech. Yes. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Whole bunch yeah. of MC, yeah. C bills, and uh, stocking stuff. Stocking stuffers, yeah. So we're getting a whole lot out of that. I just make sure to get in on December 27th, and you can get a whole bunch of swag. All you gotta do is mm -hmm. play one match, too, so that's easy. Yeah, that's nice. It's uh, good to. I I love. Um, in some ways, at least as a free to play game, you know, compared to a lot of the stuff that's coming out, you know, recently, PGI does a lot to. Even if they have don't have the best uh, PR, they do a lot to uh, give out to the community. Make oh, sure yeah. we stick around. I guess hmm. that is one thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. Now, because of this, would it be good to even just kind of roll into the new mech that came out? Since it's it's kind of mm -hmm. tied tied into this, which is oh, yeah. the Corsair. Well, like at first, like we we're um, me and Biter were sitting there, with like with the T-shirt, going, "What type of tech is this? What is this? Is this clan? Like, what are the weapons on this thing?" And turns out it's a pirate oh, I mech. I never even thought of that. So they get so they give you the T-shirt with the mech on it before they even announce it. Yeah, yeah, yeah yes. You, you you know the corners filled up with the images of the mech just sort of looming over you. It's like, whoa, that's a quite a fancy design, but. What the hell is it? Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's great. I didn't know that. That's it, funny. It's a cobblestone of like in the periphery. They they went ahead and, oh, let's put an arm here. We got an arm. Oh, we lost an arm. So let's put this. It looks like a sun spider arm on the left side. And let's do this here. Put this here. And they normally do that all the time in the periphery. It's not common. It's not common, but, but they do it though. Mm -hmm. It's definitely both really ugly and really beautiful. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I really like the uh, look of the Corsair. It, it's a bit like the Roughneck on steroids, just sort of gritty <laughs> mm -hmm. and industrial, but uh -huh. even more so. Yeah, yeah. It has this tiny little claw arm on it. I guess it would be yep. like the left hand side. It's like, <laughs> that, it's oh, really? Oh, I didn't see yeah. that. Oh, I love it. Yeah, because it has this giant beefy arm, and then on the other side, there's this little claw arm. Mm -hmm. Oh my well, god! You need to transport your salvage goods somehow. And by salvage, yeah. I'm obviously mean legitimate salvage after battle. Not when you said that, I'm sort of imagining instead just like it's got that little dainty arm and it's holding some like a bag of groceries. Yes, <laughs> yes, that's exactly how we have to make. <laughs> I mean, overall though, it looks it looks beautiful. I, I think they did a good job on this, but they did say that they had to uh, cobble it together really quickly though. For the artwork, I think and so, yeah. yeah. Oh, like the oh. lore. Uh, the guy who went up on stage at least said, you know, just a, a week or two before Metcon, they called him up and said, "Hey, we got the model, and uh, we want you to do the lore. You got oh, a my. week or two. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Randall Bolts mentioned that earlier that he had literally twelve days to 
too mm. long. Yeah, it's but crazy. That being said, I do like the lore. It makes sense for this particular mech, and unlike the um, the mech that we shall not speak about, um, yeah. I really enjoy this one, and oh, I look yeah. forward to it. <laughs> and I absolutely love the fact that they're going to incorporate the lore they put on the website for MechWire Online into MechWire 5. That's yes. a yeah. step. So, um, in case you haven't heard it yet, um, the pilot is supposed to be related to Loi Kalma of the first Battletech novel. And that's going to have ties in the Mega 5. Ooh, that's good. Mm. Oh, so, more lore, uh, the better. Beyond just its um, appearance, the Corsair is actually out on the MechWarrior Online site. You can actually purchase it. It's the regular, you know, standard collectors, hero, and reinforcement packs, all available for the Mech. Have you guys had any time to look at its specs? A little bit, yeah. Any bit, but I'm going over it now. So it's <laughs> it's a hodgepodge, a bunch of different things, but it's awesome, though. Yeah, I I feel like this Mech could be good for range brackets. Which might be more important for Mac Warrior 5 than Mac Warrior Online, but hey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um, the Corsair is a 95 ton in a sport <coughs> battle mech with uh, no ECM, no mask across the board, and uh, no jump jets either, I think. No, no. Yep. Nope. So no special techs, and all of them have exactly the same engine cap of 345. So at least uh, from those specs, it's very similar to one of the Banshees, uh, one, the one with the lowest engine cap, and Night Stars, if I'm not mistaken. A lot of the Night Stars are stuck at 345, which uh, personally I'm not a fan of. I, I, I wish it was 350. <laughs> 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 and sometimes um, if you've got an energy boat, it's nice being able to shove like a light 370 in there, you know, so you can get even more heat sinks and use up the tonnage. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it does seem like they actually put the 7R on a, um, you know, behind a paywall because that mostly has all the, all the missiles for it. So, yeah, um, there's a whole bunch of, very, uh, you know, the only difference with these variants is just basically the hard points. And the hard points, I must admit, take me a bit to get my head around because <laughs> mm -hmm. they're spread they're all spread, over yeah, the no. place. <laughs> Which, they need you know to what? put as many ones on that, that list as possible. But that's amazing because, we, I mean, we've had so many other mech packs in the past where it's like, okay, every variant looks kind of the same. This one is just a hodgepodge. And um, that's that's Corsair 7A with the 4 AMS. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah, uh, the Corsair will be bringing uh, two very AMS y mechs in the future. Yes, the 7A with uh, 4 AMS, but the, um, the reward uh, Corsair you get for the holiday giveaway, the holiday bonus, uh, has two AMS as well. Mm hmm. So uh, that's pretty neat, though I think the otherwise the holiday bonus one is a little light on hard points. Yeah, um, I'm not so sure about how well this mech will actually perform on the field. It has a lot of problems with, I mean, it has a lot of high mounts, but it also has the problem of sort of being uh, fairly wide, a fairly big target. And... Um, I'm not sure how good it's really, you know, it's really big arm on the far side will be at shielding or how well it's little sun spider arm on the other side will be for shielding. So this thing could take a whole bunch of fire and you aren't able to do like with the Banshee and take a huge engine and go really fast. You're always stuck with a three, four, five engine. Seems um, like they took like a catapult and added a thunderbolt to it. And then the hmm. arm is a, uh, what type of arm is that? The right well, arm. The closest thing I would say is it's quite like a thunderbolt. It's got the offset kind of cockpit. It's then got the big missile pod on its right hand side, yeah. and it's you know the arm, the right hand arm is a thunderbolty. It's just mm -hmm. then for some reason you shoved a stalker left arm onto it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it's hey, got stalker since, legs. And since it is inner sphere, hopefully we'll, maybe we'll get some sort of armor or structure quirk at least. Oh, I'm sure they it's will. Gonna... I'm sure they will. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it, it, I think it, 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 as ever, we don't know what the quirks are um, going forward. Uh, so, you know, if you, uh, I would suggest maybe if you're really interested in the mech, just picking up the standard pack and waiting to see how the quirks pan out. The pre-order bonus is pretty swanky, at least in the sense you get the Buccaneer pattern, 
which yes. on such a uh, odd looking mech like this, I think the buccaneer pattern will probably look quite nice. <laughs> mm -hmm. The decals are nice too. Decals are awesome, actually. Mm -hmm. You get three of them, it says, but I only see two, but it's not final art though. Mm. Octo skull and morale. Hmm. I wonder That's if it's it. a typo or not. Probably. It probably is. Yeah, and the standard pack does give you some interesting options. Like, uh, there's one variant I think will probably be quite popular, the 6R. This has a ballistic in each side torso. That obviously allows you to do the dual heavy goose setup, which is usually what a lot of the big IS mechs bring to the table. Um, there's, of course, yeah, the quad AMS one just for the gimmick. <laughs> I, like, I like the support gimmick. Yeah. yeah. And the uh, and the the one that you can get the special variant of, I think the five R, it's a mix of energy and missile uh, with a, a ballistic or two shoved in there, which is a bit underwhelming, but it, it is what it is. Uh, what's it? The the reinforcement pack gives you a whole bunch of missiles with a possible ballistic. That could be an interesting brawler almost, like uh, fill that thing up to the uh, the, uh, the gills with um, uh, SRMs and LB twenty or something like that. Yeah. And the other one, oh, well, you could do six AC2s in the arms and a couple of energy backup. Mm -hmm. The ballistic arms are usually not that favorable. And the issue with it is also the arms are asymmetrical. So, you know, it's not like, you know, your left side with the high mounted stalker arm might be a good poking uh, tool, but the other arm might be really low. Oh, yeah, <laughs> you're right. Shooting the floor. This is going to be really weird. Yeah. <laughs> but that puts us apart from all the different other mechs that are out there. Yeah. Because cause normally they're like, oh, well, this is better. Um, a mech before it was better or something like that. You know, it's always the same. This is completely different, which is going to be interesting to play. Yeah. And besides, I, just... I absolutely love the fact that we're getting a stock mech with 6 ic 2 It's unique yeah. and beautiful. <laughs> I just can't wait to see what people make out of this thing because um, people are going to go balls to the walls and make a bunch of dumb shit, I think. Oh, you don't really make dumb shit. That's obviously. My biggest issue, at least, is uh, particularly with the energy variants is filling up that tonnage because you can't easily put it all into the engine. Mm -hmm. Like with the Hero, uh, it has, what's that, how many energy is that? Six or so energy with two ballistic. And one of the ballistic is in an arm, which has upper, lower, and hand actuator. Uh, there's a fair number that do have hand actuators, like the dual heavy goose possible one has hand actuators. Uh, hand actuators are a real pain in this game, at least since they take up slots. And yeah. IS, particularly heavier IS mix, are very slot hungry. You know, you, you sometimes struggle to just fit in endo steel. <laughs> yeah. And, let, and uh, you're probably never really dreaming. You know, it's very hard to fit in light ferro or ferro on top of that. So having a hand actuator takes away those couple of slots that could have allowed you just to slot in that, you know, one or two weight saving options. Did you notice something though? Mm -hmm. The right arm is actuator upper, but the left arm actually has a hand, but in the pictures, it doesn't have a hand. Yeah, I did see that. Yuck like on the Ravager. Well, of course. Uh... Yeah. Oh, and, and well, yeah, because all they do is color swap uh, the preview images. Yeah, um, I, I yeah. often joked about this, like, uh, uh, hey, look, the uh, the hero mech has wrong hard points. <laughs> right. Is, is often the case on most of their packs. Hmm. Yeah, so I, I really like the look of this mech. However, it isn't bringing any very special tech to the table. No jump jets, no mask, no ECM. The engine cap is quite low. The hard points are spread all over the mech. And... Uh, the, it, its hard points are a little bit spartan as well, at least you, particularly since what you really want is a whole bunch of ballistic and <laughs> missile, preferably ballistic in the side torsos. Yeah. So this thing might not pan out too well, but the thing is with such a hodgepodge mech, it could totally ha you know find an archetype and be really you know really successful. I at least. For me, I will be quite interested in picking this one up. I really like IS. I like the underdogs. I like <laughs> this uh, really odd-looking mech and trying to find something that works. And everyone will be, hopefully, you know, just, oh, God, the Corsair's rampaging through everyone. Wow, how is that possible? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I, I totally just noticed that um, the arms have different kinds of actuators. 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's yeah. that's actually something that was mentioned in the presentation that you should expect some um, potentially weird geometry thing when you switch loadouts. So are we actually expecting those to have different arms depending on how many weapons you put in? I don't know, because it's kind of like how on the 7A, um, it only has upper, and that's it. Yeah, so I'm so for example, the 7R, I'd say that one has two of those uh, Starker Sunspinner arms. That could be it, yeah. Yeah, true. Mm -hmm. be, yeah. While the ballistic one has two of the long arms, which means all your ballistics are going to be low-mounted. Yay. That yeah. would be very interesting. We'll, we'll see. Yeah, it is a very odd because, like, the hero, as he sort of mentioned, that one is almost back to front, where its right arm could be just the stalker arm with just an upper actuator, where its hey. left arm is mm. the thunderbolt arm. I guess it'd have enough parts, <laughs> <laughs> or just want to switch so, it up. This is definitely going to be interesting. I'm looking forward to it. Oh, definitely, definitely so. I, I like... I'm, I'm, I would, I like it also, like, you know, if they they do have different arms, they would also have each variant has slightly different, odd looking boltons, just to change the outline even more. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? That's a really fun idea. Where it's like, okay, I'm gonna go into my seven R. I, I gotta go to my garage now and find the arm for that and weld that on today. <laughs> Also, just random mention. Oh, is this uh, the missile -y variant as a missile head? I always find that kind of cute. You could have a miss yeah. like three missiles, head and center torso, <laughs> zombie <laughs> mech. Zombie <laughs> mech, yeah. But you could only put like a certain four in there or something. Yeah. Three yeah, SRM fours or three go. streak fours or something like that. Yeah. Only our upper arm actuators are so SRM fours. Yeah. Pretty cool though. I like it. I think it's, I think yeah. it's good, and they did a good job on this. I'm. I'm pretty excited about this back now. Mm -hmm. it's, it's periphery and it's something different. Uh, a plus. All right. Yeah. The next big uh, topic I think we should cover from PGI's end would be MechWarrior 5. Uh, yeah, so B and Old Bob have actually, like uh, at MechCon, they do you know, uh, have the MechWarrior 5 demo uh, on PC and also available in the special battle pods. Yeah. Though me and Bob got the special uh, you know, pass to do the battle pods, but the the queue because there's only four pods was you know hours long, like three or so hours uh, wait. Yeah, basically I got a free pass to go on that because it's only had a standard pass and like, and they said like yeah it's about two three hour wait. I'm like fuck that, hell no, I'm not gonna go and sit for three hours to play that. <laughs> so like I played yeah, the like normal sit down version on the PCs like four or five times and it was actually not too bad. I liked it. Towards the end of the con, the queue is a lot shorter as well, so you could get in after about you know five ten minute wait or something like that. Uh, and the, there was still a several hour long queue for the the battle pods. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> maybe they're the same, the original people. I wasn't really keeping track. It was long, and I just gave my ticket to like Bombay. I'll say just give it to someone that wants to go and sit in line. But like overall, the graphics are beautiful. They did a good job on that, and at least this time the the tanks don't crash into each other, which is nice. The helicopters don't crash in the buildings, which is really good. The uh, um, the the well, explosions were really cool. I, I definitely like that. The helicopters don't crash into buildings anymore because there are a isn't super tall buildings, and b yeah. they made the helicopters fly as very very high to make sure they yeah. don't collide. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's so true. Um, one thing I did like though was the graphics in the um, in the dropship was really cool to go walk around and, and just it looked phenomenal. the The map they had of the solar system was really cool. Kind of looking at that, I did that as well. the The explosion for the fusion reactor exploding was just like a bright flash. That was kind of like interesting, but it should actually probably do damage in an area effect. The damage to buildings. I was looking inside windows when I was shooting the buildings. And and be cool. Um, like I was wrong the first time I talked about it, but they had it where um, I I thought I was looking at furniture inside the you know inside the buildings, but it wasn't that tile. But really cool if they actually had kind of like people running or you know like inside the buildings. Go ah, uh, you ant! I'm gonna go destroy the building or something. Do that kind of thing be kind of cool. But uh, but overall though, I think the game. Just looking at this, I mean, this is phenomenal of what they have so far, and I'm going to be real excited to do co-op with all you guys out there and just have a fun time doing this. Yeah, um, my reception of Microsoft 5 is a bit more mixed. I think certainly on a technical level, um, it is a huge step up, of course, from Microsoft Online. 
they're able to do a lot more uh, stuff with it in terms of uh, damage models like the damage modeling is superb at least on the actual physical models so uh you know you're walking around in the um the drop ship to start with and at the end you can actually you know you walk around for a couple of seconds afterwards and it shows you know all the damage that you had from the ma the battle are still on the mechs fresh and the actual types of hits they take changes how the you know the models actually look so you know the the, the level of detail they've done on the damage or uh, damaged mechs is superb same with uh, building destruction there's nothing like that in mwo um uh, what was there? You were talking about how how like you got hit by an AC round, like AC twenty round doesn't feel like an AC twenty round shit hit, uh, hit. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, there, there's that. That was what I was going to go on to. But you know, first it was sort of the the uh, <laughs> the positives. Okay, um, okay. Well, do we want to add sound to positives? Because I enjoyed the sound a lot. Actually, that was one of my negatives because whilst like your uh, Macquarie. It, they do an interesting thing where if you quickly look to the right, your mech warrior actually look physically right in the cockpit, <laughs> which I found kind of cool. Um, and uh, if you get hit or you walk into a building, your your mech warrior, his head actually tilts according to impacts and all that. Um, the sound, whilst it was great for uh, the original, you know, uh, demos where it's one-on-one -on -one fights typically because you're only one mech warrior. Uh, this thing, though, uh, the demo seems to uh, show MechWarrior 5 as a more, you always have four mechs, four pilots, and to really make the most of them, particularly on harder difficulties or harder missions, you really want to be able to command those mech warriors and hear everything that's going on and hear how um, not just your mech is doing, but your Lance is doing. And to that, the, the sounds seemed rather muted to me. At least um, I was not, you know, uh, compared to MechWarrior Online, the sounds weren't so distinctive and punchy. Hmm. Um, it, it felt like I was kind of in a muted room with a MechWarrior uh, 5 sounds. Like, um, even if it's kind of uh, crude in MechWarrior Online, each laser, of course, makes a very distinct pew! noise um that makes you know that you're firing it and when it stops but in you know their initial ideas for these laser sounds was to have a kind of more almost realistic -y sound sort of zzz, zzz. I, I, i'm yeah i can't really do the noise <laughs> <laughs> but you know it's sort of a clink. it's kind of like static -y noise and uh, that's fine and all but that just adds to the noise it's like more background than just a distinct pew as in MechWarrior Online, and you don't really hear the noises of enemy weapons. And as old Bob mentioned, I mentioned after um, uh, I played, there was actually, amongst the tanks, one of them is a Demolisher, which if you know in Battletech, uh, playing the, uh, the real-time strategy one, is quite a monster. It's got two AC-20s. And getting hit by that, uh, it makes a, you know, the regular Kong noise, which is cool, but that clong noise is actually quite muted compared to the rest of the soundboard. And it's the same clong as being hit by an AC-2. <laughs> Obviously, being hit by an AC-20 is a huge, big deal. Oh, yeah. At least it should be. And in MechCore Online as well, if you get hit by a Gorse rifle or an AC-20, you hear it. It, you know, it loudly and definitively tells you you've taken a big amount of damage. In this, though, uh, getting hit by, you know, damage almost sort of gets um you know if people watch um i think they streamed you know russ playing and yeah he gets beaten up to hell because <laughs> he keeps charging forward but um in some ways it, you know if you're not looking at the doll it's uh, the paper doll it's kind of hard actually to tell that you're taking a lot of damage because there's just a cacophony of war going on around you and at least with the current state of the AI, they um, all they do it, the enemy AI is rush straight forwards. There, there isn't really much play counterplay. They aren't taking firing positions or whatnot. Like um, <laughs> I got yeah, kind of annoyed. Be, yeah. Like uh, the most classic example for many people playing the demo uh, was uh, the final drop has a marauder, a stock marauder. So it has two PPCs, and the first thing this PPC marauder does is go straight forwards. <laughs> into your face so it could use those point blank ppcs to best effect <laughs> within minimum range yeah in fact i did notice the ai was kind of like dumb uh just a little mm -hmm. bit as far as what they were doing uh, but of course this is the alpha or the pre-alpha like whatever it is 
and hopefully they're going to do a better job on the AI because um, I found it was kind of easy to go and do. But of course, they're probably set up for mm-hmm. easy mode. Um, as far as sound wise, uh, sound actually makes the game no matter what it is. Um, it could be like anything. Sound is the game. And if you have great sound, even if the game sucks, at least, you know, basically that that's a big positive for the game itself. Now, now, as far as the, um, um, you know, I mean, this is, I mean, they got what, eight months to go get this together and hopefully they got just the alpha done. I'm pretty sure they got like most of other things done too, but, uh, I'm, I'm impressed. I'm glad they actually waited. Um, cause I'll rather have a game, uh, be, be delayed than actually have a, a crap game like, like 76 or something that's put out just because. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, but, there's, there's um, still time to wait for next oh, yeah. year when it does yeah. come out. So there's, yeah, some, there's obvious, time to be with ahead. There's obviously a lot of work ahead for them one way or the other. Um, so, yeah, there's only so much we can tell from this demo. Because after all, it is just a demo. It's one bespoke mission that they made. Um, whereas, of course, the actual full game. Uh, I'm not sure how it's fully structured, but at least a fair amount of it, just like with Battletech the, uh, from Headbane Screams, is going to be auto-generated missions. At least that was what the impression yeah. we were given earlier on in development. They're showing a lot mm-hmm. of you're getting dropped on the mission, and here's the, or, you know, it seems obviously auto-generated, just destroy a base, destroy a building, destroy a mech or whatever. And mm-hmm. that is obviously the majority of the content rather than this rolling battle through a uh, very linear map. Now, 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 one thing I definitely did love about it, though, was towards the end, after you do the mission, you get your salvage. Now, you, you can either keep or sell it right then and there. I thought that was a good, good idea to go to have. And and I am hopefully at Battletech, the normal like game from Heavy Rain Schemes would actually do that as well because you can just sell stuff you don't want to have. I thought that was really cool they did that. Mm-hmm. Speaking of salvage, uh, you guys have played it. Um, the salvage system on the first glance I got from the demo felt a bit like Battletech, where you could select your priority items and such. Is it yep. that way, or is it different? You... I think that pretty much sums it up. It's very similar to Battletech. Yeah, very similar, but okay. you could sell it like right then and there like if you don't want it or not. Yeah, okay. yeah. And... It's not just put it into my store, it's you can just immediately sell the item. Yeah, okay. yeah that's cool. And then going into uh, Battle Mech Salvage, in the demo we saw a Cicada being salvaged. Um, mm-hmm. Is Are those... Were those different per player and per mission, or did they say something about Max Salvage? So I deliberately legged the Marauder in my first match, um, because obviously it charged me in the face, it had PPCs, and I was just like, okay, buddy, I shoot your legs. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that was available for salvage, like for, uh, quite a lot of salvage. Oh, okay. So uh, I think if you destroy the fusion reactor, uh, it often doesn't come up as salvage, whereas if you leg it or headshot it, it uh, does have, it become available for salvage. In regards to headshotting, I found that incredibly unreliable, uh, incredibly difficult to do. And if it, it just seemed like pure luck or random chance that you actually got headshots. So, you know, I had a blackjack and um, its head was red raw, probably from a teammate shooting it at some point. So, uh, you know, it was the last mech left. I ordered all my te- squad mates to go far, far away. <laughs> <laughs> and then I just dueled one of one with a blackjack, shooting it constantly in the faceplate, you know, in the cockpit, trying up and down to find that last hit point. And obviously, in the end, I destroyed every torso component rather than the head hitbox. Oh, Jesus. Hmm. So, you know, I just maybe I'm just a terrible shot, but I have a feeling uh, it, it, it's... Um, Unlike MWO, I'm, I'm well, at least unlike MWO, I'm not familiar with where you're supposed to hit on the head hitbox. But for me, I assumed it was the cockpit. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I should have shot for the crotch. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> well, who knows? Basically, like, you know, in fact, like we said, it's the alpha test. And so they're probably going to do more and more, fe- um, you know, more and more features and everything, too. I'm excited. Yeah. I mean, I'm excited to play with you guys, man. Uh, I'm going to be very excited to go and do uh, co-op play. It'd be really neat yes. to go and do. And then the modding community will be doing a whole bunch of mess. All, you know, they're probably going to put in the clans as well. Mm-hmm. My inkling about this uh, was at least on PGI's end, I didn't necessarily think they were giving a very good sales pitch to try and hype the game. Last year, they did a very good job saying, hey, here's MechWarrior 5, it's coming out soon. And uh, what was it? Uh, they had like co-op, that was it. Uh, you go, yeah. They had the first year announcement, next year it's, uh, hey, here's co-op, we've got mod support, you know, and th- those are great 
selling points. In this one, though, um, the game seems very different, and they're not even directly talking about that. In some I noticed ways. that. Um, the the mission they give you, it's you, you and three AI companions, but all the previous missions they've shown us before has usually just been you on your own doing a, you know, an auto-generated mission. I'm not opposed to having three AI, comp AI companions, but you know, obviously that has a huge impact on balance and an impact on the type of gameplay you're focusing on. If you're going out alone, solo, against a base, it's a lot of one, you know, you, you preferably want the, the maps to be built around one-on-one -on -one fights. If it's you and three AI companions though, the actual impact of your individual play is quite reduced um, because as long as you've got three other allies and assault mechs and they all are half decent shots, sure. you know, they're going to be doing about the same work, if not more work than the player is, you know, by quite a large margin. I, I actually found this the first time I played, I deliberately told one of my pilots to stay at home. I left the dragon at home and, you know, uh, people were telling me the mission was quite easy. So, you know, that's why I, I wanted to mostly do it solo, just me and two other mechs. And yeah, it did actually get, you know, uh, pretty tricksy, at least uh, to some degrees. And oddly enough, at least uh, for the final fight, I ordered the dragon to, you know, uh, group up with us again and he couldn't make it or at least he didn't make it <laughs> we'll probably get stuck on a building or something like that yeah they they probably haven't figured out that kind of pathing yet but um i am interested like i i as a sales pitch it's like okay this is all about you and your lance your also, I want to see, like there are stats associated with each of the mech warriors. They have different skills in ballistics, energy, missile weapons, um, piloting, etc. Um, so obviously, if you have a, a guy who's really good at energies, you put them in an energy mech, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah. Um, but all that complexity with your lance and fighting a big grand battle uh, is a bit hard to tell when. Um, the commands are fairly simple. It's, you know, follow me, move to that spot, or shoot this target. Focus fire was actually quite effective for the most part. Though uh, the fights, because the AI just runs straight towards you, kind of turned into slappy fights. <laughs> and the AI, usually the AI, oddly enough, at least often focus fires and will keep focusing on the same target, which I found uh, a bit annoying in some ways because you couldn't actually play um like in mechwar online you play to the opponent's psychology um so well, oftentimes if you if you run away if you stop shooting them uh you could make it so somebody stops focusing you and focuses on someone else and this though they will just keep doggedly chasing whoever they're trying to kill <laughs> well like so, maybe like later on you know like you know we'll know more about like how the ai is gonna be hopefully gonna be better you know for the uh, um further up the road like when they do more and more like announcements for it saying hey the AI got improved mm -hmm. and here's this gonna be this and it's it's gonna be a good game and PGI um, I, I have to say with all their faults though being a small company this actually looks amazing it looks amazing well, I'm gonna be excited it, it does look amazing but one thing we have no clue about is indeed AI and PGI has never done AI we don't know if they actually hired an AI specialist or if they try to train one of their own people so well, that's just programming, though. Though it's crucial that, for this AI, game. AI is crucial. both crucial and it's super difficult to do for a game like this. Mm -hmm. So this is going to be the really big question that's still open: whether AI is going to be adequate for a single-player campaign, yeah, or whether we're going to have to wait for modded AI. Now, what engine does this use again? Unity, which does come with some simple, um, like base AI stuff you can do. But the Unity is specialized for shooters as well, so the AI is obviously for human kind of models. Okay. And it's not gonna work with the Mac models. Yeah, as it is right now, at least um, you know it's a bit of a, a play pit, a sandbox, and it, as fun enough as it is, it is like you know. Um, after the the second engagement where you're approaching a city and there's uh, radar dishes in the background, you know, the helicopters just come swarming in, you shoot down the helicopters, and then, oh, hey, the tanks turn up, they're, they're, a, bit, they're a bit behind. <laughs> and then you, you kill them because they're all swamping forward regardless of the, like, they come forward also one by one, and they don't, um, 
they don't even stop when they get within optimum range. It's kind of like Battletech, where for some reason, uh, oh, we're the convoy. We just got to drive directly towards the objective. Oh, there's a mech. I'll stop right by his foot. Oh, no, his foot stepped on me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, on a technical level, the game is visually very impressive. The gameplay is quite um, fun enough as it was. I felt, you know, it, it does feel a lot more sluggish, and it gets quite a bit, quite a bit to get getting used to. Um, again, on the sound end, um, there is no in Micro Online where you're getting really hot. You hear warning, warning bleeps like do do do, and yeah, you know, that your your mech sounds like it's overheating. In this mm-hmm. though. Uh, being over 100 percent it it sounds like being i i I think yeah when you reach like nearly top level a little voice sort of says warning hate critical actually um (laughs) a note on that though that was um um bitch and betty was done by uh bb wolf by the way oh Uh, really yeah 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 so again just for me the sound design was not it it, initially, when they were selling Micro and Five, when it was just you one on one fights, just one pilot, uh, a more subtle soundscape was interesting because there's not so much going on. But with a whole lance fighting, it's really important for me to know when I'm get my, when my heat is getting up, rather than always staring at that bar. It's also really important I know when I'm getting hit and what I'm getting hit by, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So. For me, at least, I was just not that impressed by the soundscape, particularly for the grander scope of game they seem to be going for. Just give us some time, be fine, be good. Yeah, I, on, on sound, I would say um, I like the direction they're going, and I hope the tweaking will show and will make it better until September. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Um, next, I think we got the Hatamochi and Charger coming out on 11th. Yeah, comes out on right. Tuesday. The two um, max with limited hard points that we aren't that excited about. I'm yeah, excited about the hard points. Yeah, I think we went over these a few podcasts ago. Yeah. Just it's coming out, and that's a good thing. I like the hot mochi. Everyone's like, excited about the charger, but I, li- I like the Japanese style of that thing. Anyways. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm very curious, at least in terms of agility stats, a lot of the chargers have Zeus-level stats, which is pretty decent. Uh, in terms of their agility, uh, they have a fair number of uh, specific mech uh, weapon quirks. So uh, the ba- you know the basic charger, the one that started with the standard 400 engine, actually has a 15% small laser cooldown, <laughs> just in remembrance of its uh, original weapon loadout. AC20 cooldown for the upper charger, pulse laser heat gen uh, for the charger 3K, and oddly enough, the charger hero has a 70% crit chance receiving quirk. I I think though that like, everyone's gonna rip out those small lasers on the uh, on the one a one and replace them with something else. I don't think everyone's gonna go. Oh right. yeah, I need to have those. Yeah. Oh yeah. But yeah. Without, I just... without charging in this game, no one's gonna play small lasers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially that tonnage, man. No way. You I just find it odd. Why why is the charger hero given some of the worst agility and that uh, oh. crit chance receiving quirk? I don't know. It's, uh, I think, to partly differentiate it, because otherwise it's mostly just the Charger 1A1, the, the one with the small lasers to start with. Just, I think, one less energy hard point or so. Mm-hmm. So they're, they're giving it a very a less agile, but very ta- uh, at least more tankier role. Like, uh, your equipment inside will actually be pretty hard to, to crit. Like, how much can you get from the skill tree again? It's quite a bit. Uh, uh, I think 15%. That's just, yeah, 15%, like 85% ch- reduction on crits. That's mm. pretty good. Like, uh, it's almost a mech that doesn't care about being machine gunned yeah, <laughs> at damn. that point. <laughs> the machine guns are just doing almost base damage. <laughs> it is also getting a whole bunch of extra structure rather than armor, I guess, which is why they're giving it that. Um, but yeah, I was at least initially most interested in... The Charger, uh, it's got some good agility, so I'm glad about that. It might be a, a Zeus with better hitboxes. Um, Chargers, of course, are actually getting armor to their arms, unlike the poor Zeus with the brilliant yeah. shield arms. <laughs> uh, Hatamoto Chi, yeah, uh, 
engine locked mech, or at least it's got a lot of engine cap problems. Two hundred ninety on an eighty ton mech uh, is real is a real pity. Like you want three hundred uh, usually on these types of mechs. It's mm. nice to have two internal heat sinks, um, and yeah, it's usually kind of missile and energy e. I know about you, but I'm gonna put that samurai sword on mine. And little yeah, flat and little flags. Flag. Yeah, yeah. And the flags. I'm definitely and this do that. one it doesn't come with those because those it two should. were kind of the the big thing that made the mech stood out in lore. Well, yeah, yeah. The um the the samurai sword did like I think one point per per uh, per five tons, and was uh, one ton per or one ton per ten tons that you. Uh, have for it so it's like it weighed like eight tons and does like what like 80 points or no i'm sorry um sorry i'm just sick here um uh let's see it's 80 so it did 16 points of damage yeah but uh i mean it's gonna be cool though but but yeah it should come with a uh, bolt on of a samurai sword or just some flags with it as well be kind of nice they don't do that no boltons on launch, of course. No, no. So, they will be patched in by the next patch. Yeah, hopefully so. Hopefully so. At least if you got the early adopter rewards, it's a Karita pattern for mm-hmm. uh, yeah the Hatamoto Chi. <laughs> yeah. Oh, swords and sabers. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah, the swords and on sabers. A- I think that's cool. Yeah. On average, though, at least um, eighty-ton IS mechs are not much of a blip on most people's radars. Um, these mechs have uh, some potential, but uh, it's all a wait and see, mostly. I think. Yeah. 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 Well, it comes out the eleventh, so uh, guys, if you, if you did purchase it, you'll be able to play it then. So, just let you know. That's in the upcoming patch. <sighs> yeah, the so, upcoming patch. Yeah. So it's tomorrow. Yes, mm-hmm. it's tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh well. Yeah. We always get that mixed up because we we pre-record on Saturday, um, and then then we. Post on Monday. Yep. Okay. Yep. So, so the event, um, event, advent, event. Oh yeah, they um. Well, this was the advent. Yeah, this advent was pretty easy to do. That was super easy to do. I finished it in like, in like one night. Yeah, Very yeah. easy to do. Mm-hmm. I got a couple more, but yeah, it gives you like one, two, uh, 150, 200 MC, two fifty like MC. Um, I'm sorry. 300 MC and then a bunch of C bills is really easy to do, guys. I mean, just and, do it. And many cockpit items, mostly standing and mounted. Um, and then also one extra little tidbit uh, says that more dailies will be posted af- um, after the patch. So uh, roughly when this ends, they actually didn't announce that they'll be having a new event dailies coming up. Um, on the day after the patch, which probably means um, I'm assuming stocking stuff. Yeah, or yeah. Them, that could be later. Mm-hmm. Well, normally don't yep. do like stock and like kinda, twelve days. This event kind of looks like it was designed to be daily events, and they just forgot to do them, so they put them on one. Yeah, yeah. But either way, if, yeah, but just pop in, and they, it's it's basically just another play the game, and you're guaranteed to get most, if not all, of these. It's really easy. Yeah, and uh, I like it not. Well, I like not the daily events because those really get tiring. Um, I like it when they, you just give it a week to, you know, do mm. some fairly easy hoops and get you, you give you some free fee- freebies. Oh, definitely, and you can do it in your own time. I like yeah. it. I like stuff like this because I got burnt out when it's themed. Yeah, oh yeah, definitely. I just got burnt out with all different other like events, but this is actually just easy to do a week. I we did yeah. it like one night, and so it's not too bad. Anyways. <laughs> All right, so that's that's pretty much the event. Yeah. Um, Warhammer Two C, <laughs> mess yep, up. Warhammer Two C and uh, the items that went along with that on uh, Twitter. Oh God, that was funny. So uh, I'm not f- aware of the full story, but all I knew is at least uh, suddenly it popped up. They're saying the Warhammer Two C has a new variant added, and that's an early adopter variant. So what happened is actually quite simple. Um, I think Lash posted it from Facebook first, um, where PTI had an announcement that after MacCon you're gonna be really sorry if you missed out on the Warhammer Two C pre-order. Yeah. And what they meant was um, that the Warhammer Two C is gonna be a 
additionally valuable because of the holiday reward thing. I don't know what they meant, but what people assumed was that you would get some extra stuff with the pre-order. Kind of like what they so, did with the Mad Cat, right? Or the... Yeah, so everyone yeah. went out and bought pre-ordered Ohama to see because they thought they would get cool stuff. And then, obviously, they didn't. So PTI, <laughs> PTI gave everyone who pre-ordered it a free variant to basically prevent people from trying to cancel their pre-order. That's at least yeah, no. an apology mech. Yeah, yeah. Yes. yeah now, what is that variant? Uh, looks like one ballistic, uh, two ballistic, and four energy, and three missile. This and... is quite a neat one because it, um, yeah, it adds ballistic and missile together, whereas before you never had ballistics available on the Warhammer 2C unless you got the hero. Mm -hmm. So in some ways, as long as you have pre-ordered the Warhammer 2C pack, you've got a mini hero. It doesn't give you the seedle boost, I don't think, but it does give you that hard point variety without having to pay the extra monies. Yeah, that's really nice. Yeah, yeah this, is, this, a... is, yeah, this is yeah, this is kind of like how they had um, with the Marauder Two C, if you recall. If you did a earlier adopter reward, yeah. um, mm -hmm. they did give you the extra one, which uh, I think that was the one that had jump jets or something like that. But anyway, it's yeah. very similar to that. I mean, it, it, it's just interesting uh, just how they messed up like that. But, but at, least yeah. they act, at least they actually manned up and said, hey, we made a mistake. Here is your extra mech. Thank you for, for purchasing the Warhammer 2C. Well, Again, just kinda... like with the um, holiday bonus, um, for all their problems, uh, they do, they're always trying to make, their, make best for the community. Oh, yeah. 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 Now, I kind of wish when they did do that tweet, it was like, it's going to be shrouded in mystery if you don't get it. And then I saw it, and I was like, well, could we have some more information? And then, we, then no information was given. I, um, for all the marketing and uh, stuff, I kind of wish they would have said this flat out. This is what you're going to get. A bit of mystery. Yeah, yeah. I, I definitely agree with that because I looked at it going, okay, that's interesting. Should I purchase it? Should I get it? What should I do? And uh, yeah, and, and everyone's... Um, like I think I learned from Orcus like after the, uh, um, after the MetCon and and then Matt Newman, um, like you know, tweeted on I I think on Orcus's um, Twitter page, and oh well, uh, that's a mistake. Here here's here's a website here for this. What we're gonna do for it? Yep. Um, the thing to note, at least since I remember, with the holiday bonus, um, the Warhammer Two C is also, of course, yeah, one of the mechs are giving away. And unlike the Sun Spider, it doesn't negate the whole point of buying the pack because it's actually a battle mech rather than an Omni mech. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pretty cool though. Pretty cool. I'm I'm happy for this to wear two C. Next would probably be the rifleman two C or the Griffin two C or Phoenix Hawk two C or whatever. <laughs> All right. Um I'm thinking just quickly talking about the mechs that have been released and then we can wrap up uh PGI's end by talking about yeah. factual warfare stuff. So Next. first up is the um Mech release mix? for Flea and the yeah. Hellfire. Yeah, so yeah. what's it's fleas for sea bills now? Yeah. Or is it yeah. MC? It's a flea for sea bills and MC for the Hellfire. I mean, the flea is going to be cheap, so if you want to not a live mech. Yeah, it's a fun it. mech. It's, it's a lot fun. of fun. It's yeah. not amazing, but it's fun. Yeah. I liked it. Yeah. Um, there's, of course, the variant that was behind Reinforcement Pack now available, uh, which has ECM and Mask. So lots of tech on that little guy, and you can throw a whole bunch of mediums or smalls or whatever <laughs> and run around with stealth and mask. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Then of course we've got the Hellfire which um, is for MC so no one really cares and even if you want to get it it's not worth it for MC. Right? Yeah just wait a month basically. Not worth it for MC wait until it's out for C bills. Yeah. I think I got those and I haven't really played them. I think I played them like once or twice or something mm -hmm. to get the paint job. The I enjoy the Hellfire. Yeah, I quite like the Hellfire as well. It's just basically, though, for the most intents and purposes, a mad dog without the survival and the arms or quirks here and there. It's, you know, fairly... It, it's a mad dog without the quirks plus mask and yeah. less missile hard points. Yeah, definitely. Okay, so next, uh, F, uh, Fox Warfare, right? Mm -hmm. Basically, mm -hmm. the, uh, the remaining few items on the patch notes with... Um... Some faction player improvements, some minor stuff that's added right now, some more that's coming down the line. A bigger faction player patch teased for April. Um, I mean, 
there's not that much to say. I don't think PGI really specified anything for faction play yet. Yeah, they didn't really yeah. say much during the con. They're like, yeah, faction warfare is going to have some stuff coming in, I think, in March or something like that. And, and on the notes, Paul actually put on the forums, which I'll link down below, as a bunch of different things, what they plan on doing, what they might do, or what's, you know, kind of like, uh, yeah, we'll think about it type of, type stuff. Yeah, I, like, it's cool to see where their thoughts are going. But at the same time, um, they've got points like um, story lower faction to room choices to cement the a desire to stay loyal. Yeah. Well, what is that supposed to mean? It's cool, but give me details. What are you thinking about? What are your ideas? What are your plans? It's, I'd say it's a whole lot of smoke we've currently got. I mean, at, at least it's a step in the right direction, though, at least putting a little bit more of to be loyal to a faction instead of like everyone, everybody's mercenaries because then they could just jump from point A to point B and do whatever they want to do. So having a loyalty option just to be loyal to a, to a faction is nice. Um, I just think, though, like if they're going to do the loyalty uh, stuff, got to make it so like you get extra stuff when people just go jump from mercenary to mercenary. Or from faction to faction. Yeah, so at best we, on the forums, uh, they posted... Uh, under developer outreach in the developer's corner, uh, Paul did post basically what I think was his his notes about faction warfare, mm. and you know he he's setting out all the ideas he had, and sort of at what stage they are at with all these different ideas, and you know how quickly they're going to possibly put in the game, and you know all we've got is basically a long list of bullet points and knowing how soon they are to being launched. No I must admit, yeah. I, I mean, I've, I was from the start at least always a bit skeptical of faction warfare. And whenever I'm talk, hearing about all these changes, my, my mind sort of glosses over, just like I'll wait until it comes out, then I'll talk about it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's how I feel. <laughs> I uh, did see from the miscellaneous tool for players to enter planetary data that I don't know if that's a good idea mm -hmm. <laughs> to give um, everyone. Uh, that was yeah. already done, Bob, so that's a tool you're currently using. Yeah, I'm using that tool now, but I have access to all the planets to go ahead and put whatever I want, and I'm pretty sure that they're not looking over the planets type stuff. Like, I just do it because I love the lore, but um, I mean, you really, I got to trust some stuff because you could change the planets. You could change the names of the planets if you wanted to, and so that, that might be just a trust mm -hmm. issue. Um, uh, that's one thing Paul said. It's like, don't change the planets; just change, just change the descriptions, like on it. Mm -hmm. But uh, that that might be something that they want to look at. All, it's all a big question of how it's implemented, right? Yeah, it could yeah. be um, like a Wikipedia almost, where anyone can edit it. So I could just go in, delete Bob's entire entry, and write butts, and then yeah. Paul Bob has to come <laughs> back. There's not an archive, so he just goes, "Oh God, I have to make the whole thing again." Yeah, <laughs> and yeah, then the next night I come back and edit it and write butts. That, of course, isn't an improvement. <laughs> <laughs> I, know. Um, I mean, depending on who you are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but obviously, at least there's probably plenty of law hounds out there in the community who would love to be able to put their suggestions forward and you know everyone be able to put you know make that map have more details yeah, yeah, in, yeah. in the end yeah if you're interested in the map which i think one or two people are i raise my it. hand <laughs> yeah but um yeah in the grand scheme of things of course the bigger important things for faction warfare is i think yeah as we as we've been mentioning just making it so loyalties matter and give you a reason to actually launch into a match other than just moving a bar to one side and then in the sphere has one more planet or clan has one more planet mm -hmm. yeah okay. um so, and then i think i think probably one of the bigger items means this personally is under the systems update it's under a, a orange and purple color um more than four drop decks um which should be interesting to give more variety and uh, one that is, I guess, split in the community or developers is having VoIP prior to your drop. Yes, that might be good. Well, it could be good or yeah. bad. It's a double-edged blade. Yeah, it, um, it, I think it's blue because it has severe technological issues since it's yeah. outside the game. So the technology simply doesn't exist yet. So it would mm. probably be very expensive for a honestly tiny benefit. Yeah, it depends how much really people uh, want to coordinate or can coordinate in that short period. Because it's uh, when you're sitting in the lobby just before the match starts. Uh, you know, if you don't find an enemy team, you're waiting for ten minutes possibly. Um, 
but you know otherwise you have a minute to you know when both teams are found you have a minute before the match actually starts and in that time you have to quickly type in the text box everyone go fast everyone go heavy everyone do this um yeah and it's got sort of like even more her uh, herding sheep where you can't even just quickly say over comms you know i'm dropping heavy this first drop or I i'm dropping lerms let's do a lerm drop or something yeah. like that you can't do that at the moment. Yeah, most people are in Discord too, like as far as uh, units wise. So uh, um, it, it's a good thing, a bad thing, like Lars said. Uh, I'm interested in more reward kickers based on player behavior. What does that mean? Yeah, I have no clue like what that means. Yeah. Well, that's the issue of the whole thing. We don't know what it means. Yeah. Yeah. But one thing, one point that stood out to me without going too much into detail um, stable transfer between players within a unit. <gasps> they have that? that? Where? Is... Where? Um, under coffers, it's on the end of the list. That oh, is an oh. interesting thought because that is going to have a giant impact on the game if they yep. actually do this. So <laughs> I'm I'm curious to see whether they implement it or not. But I'm happy they are thinking about it. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. I, oh, wow. And there's so many interesting ideas. I'll wait to see if and how they're implemented. Like there's stuff like unit-based objectives. Oh, hey, there's me and a whole bunch of friends, and we all together need to play X number of matches. That encourages me to call my friends together, who, you know, do the faction warfare event or mm. scouting or whatever. Yeah. Um, other things like whilst I did, I've, I've never really used the feature in so long. They do have this call to arms uh, feature. You know, where if you allow the pop-up in the corner, it says, oh, this faction needs your help. Quick, join the fight. You know, or, you know, it's uh, yeah. it's telling you there's a short queue. Um, before, there was not really much point. And of course, you're jo joining as a solo. So you could be very much facing up against a 12-man. Well, give rewards to people who use Call to Arms encourages people to use that mechanic. You know, mm -hmm. if you are like doing faction warfare and you're doing it alone, um, you can... Uh, wait until there's a call to arms and click it and you know get extra stuff. It's just you know more engaging that way. All right. So since we don't know about a lot of borders, maybe we should just real quick go over the things that are definitely coming next patch, which are in the patch notes. Yeah, like, so uh, yeah. to wrap up MWO, let's cover the patch notes for Tuesday and tomorrow. Yeah. So for yeah. faction play we got the faction queue data so you can see how many people are queued. I mean, I think that's an important information to have. I like it. Mm -hmm. A refresh button for the friends list. Finally. <laughs> no longer have to, do you have to guess whether someone is actually online or not. You can just click refresh and be certain. Mm. Favorites. So I can annoy my friends by saying you're my favorite and you're not. <laughs> <laughs> and sorting friends list. I'm not too certain what that's going to be. I imagine in some ways you could have it sort of, there's several groups you fraternize with. So there's like, there's the guys I play competitive with, there's the guys I, you know, have played casual with, there's this, that, Lars's and the other group. guys I play, Faction Warfare, yeah. Lars's group, et cetera, et cetera, and mm -hmm. randos. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I could put them into all different columns, and that way at least, you know, if I'm going from group to group, I don't have to sort through the entire list. I could just say, oh, I'm playing with Lars's group, I'll look at the Lash's group list. Oh, I'm it's playing. Good, yeah. yeah, I'm playing with this other group. I'm playing with Baby Cake um, group, and oh, uh, here is all the people who play with him. Yeah, I mean it's quality of life improvements, and that's that's always good. <laughs> it all yeah. depends, of course. Uh, big question is um, how it is implemented. How easy is it is to use? We have no idea right now. And how are they going to muck it up? <laughs> <laughs> so from, from this these experience I, I think we should talk about this next week because that's a big thing yeah yeah, yeah definitely like Okay. I moved all my friends to one column accidentally deleted the column and deleted all my friends oh god <laughs> yeah. I, I can I see that happening happen. yeah I can see that happening too <laughs> <laughs> uh, so for big items I think there are only two things um, some stuff about the heat system we discussed earlier, by that you want to give us your guess? Uh, yeah. Tell well, us okay, about the so water me. bottles. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a good way to do it. Let's do that. It's fine. Perhaps. I mean, because the thing is, we're still, I'm, I'm still not sure, like, PGI's explanation is a bit confusing. The long and short of it is they're claiming, at least, um, when you lose a site or so, 
uh, with an X, a clan XL or uh, inner sphere light engine, you of course actually lose heat sinks, which means you lose dissipation and capacity. Principally, actually, oh, that's it. That's why I, I get it now. You're losing the capacity from your first 10 heat sinks. Um, a way to explain it would be um, imagine instead of heat sinks, to make it simple, we've got water bottles and you have 10 water bottles in your engine and there's extras around on your mech. Um, the first 10 water bottles in your engine have extra capacity. Like they give you way more capacity than all the other water bottles. And um, what used to happen is you, when you lose a side torso, you quote unquote lose four water bottles, but you lost the capacity of the external ones, not the uh, starting water bottles. So it, it, at least it, you, using European measurements, like we have two liter water bottles inside the engine and one liter water bottles outside the engine. And what it used to do is when you lost uh, the side torso, you lost four of the, your top water bottles. So you see you put one liter ones and now you're losing your two liter water bottles. So it's actually, you're actually losing the heat sinks um, that were in the engine that are giving you the biggest benefit. I think that is it. They are also saying at least um, that um, when, uh, before there was issues with how the heat bar displayed, I, um, when you lost the side torso so that the percentage wasn't exactly right after losing a side torso, or at least there were issues immediately afterwards, and that that will be uh, you know, much more clear. He would drink the water bottles? <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> uh, at least in their initial exp explanation, I thought they were talking about heat, as in how you displace the heat between the heat sinks, but all the heat sinks have the same amount. But if they're talking about capacity, then it makes sense for them to talking from the top and the bottom because your starting okay. heat sinks are a lot more valuable. And they're saying, you know, uh, uh, <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> PGI has finally broken by that. <laughs> only took them seven years. I'm too tired from all the all the plane flights and my haphazard uh. sleep schedule as a plate. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Should it just anyway. be like you lose half your heat, you know, half, yeah, half your capacity because you, lose, you know, lose a side. Let's say they have five on each side, so you lose half and, you know, half your capacity and half your, uh, um, um, like, you know, heat, basically, your heat sinks. Well, technically, what, I, I, here's a question at least. Um, <laughs> okay, so you have those two liter water bottles in your engine and you lose a side torso. Four of them have now been destroyed. They were technically holding onto the heat. Does the heat fall off your mech as the site also falls off your mech? Or does that heat immediately jump over to the rest of the mech? Like the water that's filling those bottles? Yeah. I mean, yeah. I think it'd be kind of nice if like, if you lose half your mech, you lose half your heat. That makes sense because that half was holding the heat. Why, yeah. why, <laughs> would, a, assuming... why, would, a of, why would a bunch of water bottles on the floor go back into my body? <laughs> But that's yeah, yeah. <laughs> why, why would I want to pour all that water away? That seems a really bad yeah, water back into my mech. That seems a really yeah. bad design. Well, that's assuming you keep five on each side, oh, five in the torso, five there. Is it? Is it uh, uh, four on the right and left torso, and then two in the center torso? So what happens basically, like from there? So if you lose one torso, you lose four, but you still have six left. You know, it's just I don't know. I I I yes, really think it, they made it too complicated. It is it something like. like... Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. When you lose the side torso, you do basically lose uh, four heat sinks worth of stuff, um, or something like that. You know, you lose X number of heat sinks, like because they were actually part of your engine. And of course, any heat sinks that were on that side of the mech that you lost. Yeah, I th um, I think the patch notes require a grade school math equation with visuals hmm. to, to, to help us <laughs> along with this. <laughs> Because I think, I think in all honestly, um, we are all very tired from either uh, post con funk or tired or just from, the, from like the stream last night, which went over over time than usual. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and and at least in some ways, in my mind, I'm just like, okay, all you need to ever do on a simple level is just compare. Uh, capacity to heat inside the mech, and when you lose heat sinks, all you do is say capacity goes down. What does it matter if it's the top or the bottom? Well, it does kind of matter because um, there's different uh, heat sinks do still have the same dissipation rate, but their capacities change according to whether they're your first 10 or not. 
I, th- yeah. I think we'll find out on Tuesday. I'm just going to yeah. leave it there. For the most part, it's not changing the game at all. Uh, just it may be a little more punishing if you're riding the heat limit. You're, you know, at 99%. Um, they're, they're, they're talking about it as if, you know, if you're at 99% and you lost the side torso, you might suddenly become, you know, um, over, you know, over 100%. You might start overheating. And otherwise, the display will not be lying to you. There won't, there'll be less errors on average. That's the long and short of it. Yeah. Yeah. And the important summary is stay hydrated, people. Yes, stay hydrated. All right, I think next up, in this analogy, you want less water in your mechs. You don't yeah. want to overflow. Over- overflowing with water is bad. Don't yes. overhydrate people. Yeah. Well, you see, by that, you don't want the water in your mech. You want it in your body. All right, can we maybe change it from <laughs> bottles of water to bottles of lava? Bottles of lava. Because you don't want that in your body. Well, but... I, you want you your bottles to be me. empty. Don't touch me. <laughs> Hydrochloric acid, and, come on. Anyway, I'm going to start moving on to stealth armor. Stealth armor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so stealth armor stealth. will now conti- continually produce 1.5 heat per second while activated, and they're gonna, going to take away the ability of when your stealth armor is activated, um, it would basically lock that heat in from all of your other weapons. Um, if I if I'm reading this properly, was it a problem mm-hmm. before though? As 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 far as like it being abused or something like, why would they add the 1.5 heat per second like generation? So uh, they removed like before stealth completely turned off your dissipation. Now they're taking that away. All it does is become a new heat source. That's kind of dumb. I I I don't know. I mean, well, I don't mind it that much. Um, just imagine as as if your mech has just large heating vents blasting the heat out. Um, instead of the stealth closing that vent, your vents are still open. Now. Um, but you still need to. But now then you wouldn't be stealthy. Heat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah right. Okay, fine. I mean, you fire like one the or two weapons, vision, and you're overheated. The heat vision will show your heat still pouring I mean, out of your mech. All it's doing is, I'm not sure, like. Um, Okay, this is my really stupid lore explanation, which would be, oh, well, you see, the stealth armor is actually refrigerating the outside to be the same temperature as the environment, and then it pumps all the heat through your toes, and no matter what mech it is, it takes 1.5 heat to do all that. Well, maybe there would be another stupid lore explanation if you say stealth armor is just some giant electronics device that jams the enemy's targeting and produces heat. I mean, it's not what stealth armor is supposed to be, but I... it's not even in game how it works because in game, yeah, it, it it stops them from locking onto you, but you also don't appear on thermal. Yeah. Before stealth you didn't appear right. on thermal because you're shutting yourself off to the world, whereas now you're refrigerating yourself. <laughs> anyway, um, it, magic. It, it, it... Yeah. Anyway, through the power of stealth armor magic, yeah, they are changing the heat mechanics. So now, um, if you take a whole bunch of heat sinks, you can uh, turn stealth on and you know still be dissipating heat. It means also if you have plenty of heat sinks, uh, even on a hot map, you could go eternal stealth. I think sure. they probably did this for all the mechs that just have machine guns, and you know, basically for for stealth machine guns or something like that. That's the only reason why they probably do this. Well, the the thing was. <laughs> When you had no dissipation, any weapon you fired was adding to, a, you know, your timer. Like it was adding to your heat bar, and it wasn't going away. So even if you were trying to use a two small laser build, <laughs> those two small lasers' heat would build up over time. Uh, as it is right now, though, if you've got a whole bunch of heat sinks, um, you can use a four medium laser build. Uh, it, it'll take you longer to dissipate all the heat, but you will dissipate it. Um, it actually radically changes things. Like uh, if you have the quad light gorse stealth Fafnir, you know, one of the, the stealth gorse mechs. Yeah. Before you only could stealth for so long. With this change, um, as long as you're able to dissipate enough, you can have eternal stealth, even pro- probably on hot maps. Yeah, stealth forever, man. So uh, this is a huge buff, in my opinion, to stealth armor for the most part. Definitely. Uh, because remember, at least um, the the recent changes to heat, they made dissipation really strong, and then all stealth is doing is lowering your dissipation. 
<laughs> but you just have a you know the, they just changed heat to give you lots of dissipation so all in all it just means you're back to you know pre dissipation buffs or more or less in some respects huh. um it, it is equivalent to um roughly like firing an ac20 in a sphere ac20 a clan ac20 roughly you know that's that's the amount of heat that has been put into your system continuously uh over time so you know, it, it, it's not inconsequential, but um, yeah, this is a huge buff to stealth mechs, and at least to someone who likes using lock-on weapons, this is uh, quite spooky in some ways. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because stealth, uh, with the previous system where dissipation was turned off completely, meant you either used machine guns and goose, and otherwise it was only a very temporary thing. Like, it, it, yeah, was, yeah. it was sort of a very short-term thing. With this, stealth can be used feasibly to be turned on for extensive periods of time like um a mech with stealth on before had was on a ticking clock now uh, you know as long as they're not shooting they should be able to dissipate all that heat and be fine and they you know they're yeah. not on that ticking clock so this is I like a total buck then to... sorry God. yeah yeah like well, i might actually begin to use a stealth fafnir now mm -hmm. that's are you, weird are you saying you haven't used it until now no i mean i'm hey, be, before this okay. Before this patch, I was never a huge fan of stealth, to be uh, honest with you. Yeah. Because I am horrible at heat management, and my hands cramp up whenever yeah. I'm trying to turn on and off stealth. Yeah. Because um, my keyboard is kind of ick, and so is my mouse. So, yeah. Um, this will make me want to use stealth again. Yeah. Stealth was a, a huge gimmick before. Um, and now it's still a bit of a gimmick, but it doesn't so horrendously punish you because you know it uh, i don't know what the dissipation of a mech was before but let's just say you know you dissipated five you know seven heat a second or whatever um the, before it, it it you know it was like minus seven heat per second now it's just 1.5 <laughs> <laughs> that's manageable yeah well we'll see like on, on tuesday we'll we'll definitely test it out though too i, I know I'll, I'll probably just run around the uh, the map and test this crap out too and uh, yeah, because it's just in, uh, a 1.5 heat per second, bigger mechs can take more heat sinks yeah. and therefore overcome its effects even stronger. The only problem is your IS tech, of course. You're shoving in an ECM, taking two slots, and stealth, which takes like 12 or something like that. That's a lot of slots. Yeah. Yeah. It's a lot of slots for stealth still, so even your bigger mechs have a problem. But who knows? You know, that um, ECM Warhammer be could become even more sneaky. Ooh, okay. I'm scared. Let's move on. All right, Too and there's just a uh, whole slew, well, a short little slew of uh, quirk changes. The Katara 19's got a heat gen quirk. I think it's the Katara with energy hard points. Oh, okay. so, I think so too. Yeah. It, it's nice for the laser boat to actually get a little bit of help on that regard. Everyone's using the 18s. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's the best one. <laughs> And otherwise, know. a whole slew of mechs have got minor agility buffs, which at this point I'm not even really excited for because it doesn't really change the mechs that much. Yeah, and th and, th and to go over every single one of them would take us forever, so let's just skip over that. They're just for minor our, buffs. <laughs> yeah, for our, for, our, for our viewers, there is a PDF file. Please go ahead and read it if you are interested. Yeah, I'll put the link down oh. below too. Uh, I just remembered at least the Katara 19. I, I knew it was familiar because I do own one of those, and that's because it has a dark quirk. Ah, <laughs> see. <laughs> there okay, <you> go. fine. <laughs> okay, cool. Well, um, if, if I may, there's one mech that stood out to me with the quirks, which is the Centurion D, which I always run with XL. It's no way more mobile than it was before. Shadowhawk, I'm happy bit, about yeah. that. Black Lanterns are getting it too. All right, so. Cool. Bunch of okay. Stuff. Anyway. Uh, next, I think we have Catalyst that, Games, right? Yeah, though to just wrap up the app, that is all PGI, MechWarrior Online, uh, new 80 tunners, new 90 tunner, all IS uh, stuff. IS assaults aren't necessarily the biggest thing, but who knows? Maybe, you know, as long as they can fit Heavy Goose, they're probably fine. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, huge buff to stealth. Yeah. Cool, cool. And for the next part, we've got the Catalyst Games presentation, which in my opinion was the one I personally was most excited about. And after I seen it, I'm still most excited about. Actually, the only thing I don't like is, uh, um, you know, you know, before playing Battletech, you're able to purchase, say, vehicles and mechs and all that kind of stuff, like individually. I I know you can get them through 
Ironwind um, models, but they're kind of expensive. Mm -hmm. And if uh, I want to get these models, yeah. but they're not going to have them out. Um, in fact, I said they're not going to go ahead and get them out. So if I want to have, say, a bunch of Thunderbolts, like with the new plastic models, I'll have to buy, you know, you know, you know 46 box sets. I'm kind of upset about that. Too quickly go over the Catalyst presentation. I don't think they've said too much new stuff in terms of what they're selling. No. For the most part, they've been showing off their box set again. They've been showing off the new source book, which is obviously Shattered Fortress. And... Dark Age. <laughs> I, I, I was kind of hoping to avoid that. Okay. But Sorry. since you did mention it, yes, um, we are finally moving past the edges that shall not be mentioned. And oh. I am really, really excited for anything that's going to come because anything's going to be better than the ages that shall be named <laughs> also they did specifically say that they signed on a lot of the old authors including michael stackpole and Ronald Bolt, obviously and so on and we're getting big people focused novels yes. rather than the kind of garbage ones we got for the unnamed ages um, and well, also one, gonna... one one tiny tidbit i super enjoyed uh, the one guy from catalyst games totally um fangirled about meeting stackpole so it's it's nice to see that the old authors have some respect there uh, yeah stackpole did do some uh, great great novels and i love i love reading this stuff and um uh, one other thing too is that the uh, the box set the beginner box that will come out this month which, which will be like december and january that's when the big box set with all different um mech models will be coming out so if you guys can pick them up and support uh, BattleTech if you guys can and one last thing to what the lore and mm -hmm. novelization stuff. Um, Catalyst is specifically asking the authors what kind of novelization they want to do, whether they want to do a full novel, a novella, or a short story for the stories they want to tell, which means the authors are getting a lot of control, which means we are going to potentially get a whole lot of really, really good stories, and I'm super excited about that. And to add on oh, to that, really, really strong fanfic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, it could be fan fiction. <laughs> and then Bite of Unbited Sim become Empire of the uh, of the whole inner space. <laughs> 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 Just p power of sheer charisma and computing power. On Catalyst Games, I mean, uh, it was a big pity they didn't have the box sets there or the maps. Yeah. To say, oh, look at all the cool stuff we got, but it's just the books. <laughs> oh, okay, I got it now. Tour, um, a very good series that they do is called Tour Tour of the Stars, and they do in it um to do each planet. And one of the people did ask, will they actually make kind of like a a book of all the all the planets they've done so far? And they kind of like uh, kind of put books out, you know, like you know like with that. And I love the Tour of the Stars. Um, um, book or, or like PDFs that they have for it because it describes everything about a planet, whatever it is, and it's great. And I hope they actually do that to make books on them. Um, one other thing I'd say is that at least I, I like the energy of the Catalyst game guys on uh, stage for the most part. It seemed quite inter you know, into their own product. It, it was quite a contrast from the earlier day um, with dumb stuff by uh, PGI because you sort mm -hmm. of got. Um, an exhausted Russ who's been flying back and forth to Seattle to talk with Microsoft yeah. and um, uh, Paul who is even more exhausted putting together the battle pods I think so <laughs> PGI is just sort of you know they they were working on fumes whereas Catalyst Games turns up and say hey guys we've got boxes coming out Sometime we're not sure yet. <laughs> and, and we got maps. Look how awesome the maps are! I just love my maps. Uh, we don't know. Well, it's coming out later, probably. Anyway, <laughs> but the maps will be new. The uh, maps will will be new and double sided as well, too. So it'll be completely different types of things going on. So I'm kind of excited about that. Huh, cool. One thing I found interesting from the Q and A is um, their current focus on the box sets, the starter box sets they're selling. Um, mm -hmm. So we're not getting something like the old lens packs anytime soon, at least not in plastic. Yeah, yeah, and uh, which, it, sorry, which makes sense from a business perspective. I'm just kind of sad about it. Because because one thing that really uh, pissed me off about that unnamed age is that uh, I had to buy those those Pokemon boxes if I want a certain type of mech. Yeah, like um, if I want to say like an Atlas, I have to go through like twenty or thirty box sets to go get that one Atlas that I want, or go through the third market. Mm -hmm. And so, like, if I want to build something, say, like a Lance of Thunderbolts or a Lance of, um, you know, Griffins, whatever, I want to be able just to purchase those and just do the, you know, do whatever I want to do. And and they did say they're not going to do that. So, <laughs> Fear my Lance of Ravens. Oh, yeah. no, they already died. 
Yeah, I know. But yeah, I am kind of upset about that. But but overall, though, I, I'm glad they're putting out the new box sets. All right. Uh, that about wraps it up for Catalyst Games Labs. I think we move on to Hairbrain Schemes. Yep. I enjoyed Flashpoint. I didn't do any Flashpoints yet, but I did get a Hatchet Man. I did get a Hatchet Man. I was really excited about that. It cost me two pilots, but I still got it. I, I I went balls to the wall and just legged them as much as I could, but it was it was a lot of fun get, get that Hatchet Man. Okay. Well, for me, I haven't had a time to actually play a lot of Flashpoint yet. I only tested the max uh, stock, yeah. and I found that stock there, as expected, very much underwhelming. <laughs> Especially the Hatchet Man, which just blows up whenever it gets looked at. <laughs> um, I'm looking forward to playing Flashpoints, though. So I might be able to give more f- feedback on the expansion later on. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm on the same boat as Ian. So I, in preparation for this, at least uh, after coming back from Metcon, have been playing hours upon hours upon hours upon hours of Battletech, chesting out the new career mode. And of course, I did eventually get a flashpoint. So I've done a short play through, or you know, not through, but you know, I, I played up to getting a lance of medium mechs without the the DLC, and then I played it, um, a lance of up to medium a, a, a lance of medium mechs with the DLC. Uh, the flashpoints actually appear, you know, they take a while to appear, and they're also, of course, yeah, you know, as they had uh, described, later game content. So doing the near career, uh, new career mode meant. Um, it took me forever until a flashpoint turned up. <laughs> and <laughs> the one faction I was trying to ally with were the enemy faction. But anyway, I worked re- one of, um, uh, you know, so uh, I'm working really hard to be friends with these guys, and then I have to be jerks. Uh, uh, I'll do all my progress, thanks. Um, but not only that, uh, the funny thing was, at least in some respects, was I work all the way, I, I've, I've only done one flashpoint, and the flashpoint that you know, the early one that spawned was the same one they gave at Metcon. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah, nothing new. <laughs> nothing new. That's Not nuts. yet. <laughs> and the de- next black points are like three and a half skulls, four skulls. You know, like I need, I need plenty of heavies, or at least a couple mm-hmm. more um, heavies. I've got one Orion thus far, and I could maybe do them, but. Um, you know, I, I'm trying to. I, I'm still trying to do all the the missions. Like every planet you go to has like five or six missions. Hmm. But um, yeah. for the most part, at least, my overall thing about Flashpoint would actually just be, uh, at least thus far, after hours and hours and hours, is that you know, at least buying the DLC on its own is not worth it. Honestly, um, the free Blast update, the free update that gave you career mode, is not half bad. Like it, it's kind of fun going back in a whole new sandbox to explore. Uh, you're not, you know, throttled through the story mode. Um, but that is already available for free. The jungle environments available for free. I played plenty of jungle maps. Um, you do miss out on the new mechs. Uh, oh no, the lightly armored cyclops or uh, the crab and. Uh, oh yeah, the Hatchetman is pretty neat. I actually uh, use the Hatchetman hatchet man as a, a staple of my lance after I got rid of its stock loadout. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, oddly enough, all I did was um, I strip out all the ballistics, max out the armor, and put two large lasers in it. And so it just jumps <laughs> about, you know, you get a large laser, you get a large laser. <laughs> and you get an axe. So one tip yeah. that I did notice with the career mode, um, in career mode, um, if you do a mission, the day doesn't advance. So you can do five, six, seven missions in a single yep. day, which mm-hmm. obviously means that time advances really slowly, which means yep. that those 1200 days are going to take forever to complete if you do it, if you max yep. out your doing it. If you do, yeah, five or six missions and it's like... Uh, to start with, it's every 15, 20 days it takes to go to another planet, and then you do mm. five missions. It's going to take me forever to finish one career playthrough. Um, and of course, you're going to upgrade the Argo, so instead of taking 20, you know, 12 to 20 days, you could make it, you know, 10, you know, 9 to 15 days or whatever. You know, your mech, your, your, uh, the Argo will go faster between planets. Yeah. I actually found that a little awkward sometimes because uh, the way it used to work was. You know, sometimes my mech would take a little bit of structure damage. Uh, it happens. Um, I, I put it in the repair bay. I do a mission. I come back and it's repaired. 
well, now I have to go, oh, now I'm giving up a date explicitly just for this mech. <laughs> yeah, that, that's definitely a major issue, I noticed. I did um, play a couple of hours, and I mm -hmm. at some point I just had to stop and pass a month or so <laughs> to repair all of my crap. <laughs> uh, yeah, I found um, the reputation system is uh, a big one for me, at least with this career mode. I, I, I'll just, a uh, quick mention would be, I really like starting with mostly light mechs rather than already with mediums. You know, ah. It's good to climb up the totem pole. But... Um, <laughs> Reputation system. Um, the way it worked before was fairly basic, at least. Uh, you, you take a mission with a faction, you get like five plus reputation with them and minus one with your opponents. The way it works now, though, is instead you get like plus six reputation with your friends and minus five with the people you fight. So they basically made it so that you know, the people you're fighting are way more pissed off about the fact that you're actually attacking them than it was before. So, so you, know, you can actually become enemies with a certain faction a lot quicker, I think, for the most part. Um, my issue, at least in career mode, was um, I'm sort of in the long scale because particularly i'm planning to do the you know i'm planning to finish 1200 days or whatever it's like every planet you go to auto generates the missions and you don't really have any control over what missions turn up hmm. um so you know i'm trying to ally with liao at least since i started near them and i did a whole bunch of missions to start with so why not they're kind of you know in the center of the map kind of you know they they got a lot of reach into most regions so if i'm allied with lao it's quite convenient for this region of the game um and after those first few worlds i just got endless missions against liao and my first fla flashpoint was against liao as well <laughs> <laughs> um, I did find a way to abuse the system, but unfortunately it makes the campaign even longer, which is when you arrive at a system, um, you click on clone tracks and it, you know, it, does, it takes a little bit to load and auto-generate all the missions. If you save before it, auto, you know, it does that loading phase, you can keep reloading and it will, it will randomly generate new missions each time. Well, that's a lot uh, of games that are out there, you know, go and do that type of thing too, and then you go and cheat, well, quote, cheat that way. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so by saves coming, because you know, at least I'm trying to be friends with a certain faction and maximize the score, because there's this stupid score thing going on. So for me, I'm constantly reloading and tallying down who's fighting who and how my reputation will change. And then you know, I get a whole library of saves that are quite good, and then I look at which one's good enough <laughs> and load that one up. But each load takes, I don't know... 30 seconds a minute or so. You know, it's not super fast on my PC. But uh, here's a particular reason not to do this. The default option for this is Iron Man, after all. I turned that off. I mean, I know you can, but I really think very much what you played in Iron Man. Yeah, but okay. Um, nonetheless, at least, you're given random missions where you're fighting different factions, etc. Like, you know, a lot of the periphery has um, just planetary government. I would love to fight planetary government, they are. They don't care if you keep killing them all the time. <laughs> and mm -hmm. of course, if you do a mission for planetary government, all you're doing is pissing off one of the bigger factions. Mm -hmm. But um, the thing is also, at least, um, if you are disliked by a faction enough, they will not give you very big missions, or if at all, any missions. Um, and you can't do the bigger missions unless you're friends with a certain faction. But my numbers... If you know, if I'm just playing map after map after map, you know, uh, taking all the contracts available to me, then all I'm doing is like the numbers are just wibbling backwards and forwards. It's just you know down to pure random chance. And maybe I'll become slightly friends with this faction, but it'll quickly go away because I randomly get missions against them. Um, and I'm just not too pleased with. Um, it doesn't feel like I'm actually progressing or it takes forever to progress with a certain faction because, you know, I'm doing the save scumming method to try and be friends with one faction and, um... Not really coming it, up then, huh? It's not, re it's not really coming up. It takes forever to grind up to be friends with them. Um, and eventually, if you ally with them, you can't even use them as an opponent in the future um, because you're allied, of course. Yeah. So there's even more missions in the future if I even ally with them. <laughs> Um, that would be locked off to me. So I, I don't know. It's sort of, a, at least to start with, you could take all the missions available to you and they're all accessible, but I'm worried, or at least I'm interested to see how it pans out in late game where, you know, all the factions except for maybe Lao say, 
we're not best friends. I'm not giving you the Atlas mission. And everyone else is, um, yeah, it's only Liao who gives me those missions. I can't fight against Liao and, and the other factions are pissed off at me because I was trying to be friends with one faction. The one thing that I've noticed uh, is a black market and uh, it costs like five 500000 to go join it. And then there are certain planets you can go and go to and get some better weapons. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, my stock, on my stock mode campaign that I'm doing, um, I, I just, it, it just seems like I'm progressing a little bit further than what I should as far as like, you know, as far as getting the weapons and then things are getting a lot, lot easier to go and do, we, you know, even in stock mode, the only thing I could change out are just the plus plus weapons. And with, when you jump to a, to a, a planet with a black market, it's like, wow, shit, I could get this um, gyro that has plus three, you know, you know, plus three defense or, or, you know, like, you know, get this kind of stuff. I, th- I think it's too generous basically as far as like what's out there, depending on your level. Cause right now I'm still in the story mode or the stock mode. And, uh, yeah, they- yeah. Yeah, they've changed the uh, loot generation. Uh, the way it worked before was um, when you started on early on, uh, you know, it's all basic equipment. There was nothing special. Yeah. When you start getting into mediums, you maybe, as a very rare loot, get a plus weapon, like a medium laser plus. But you never got plus plus or anything like that. And uh, the loot progression was incredibly uh, linear, yeah. I'd say. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was. Which meant, at the end most of the weapons that dropped were just plus 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 and it was just a matter of basically building as big a lance as po- quickly as possible so you could grind up that linear pole to get to the end game stuff because you're never finding the end game stuff this way actually though i am kind of pleased um that i'm not getting swamped with just plus weapons i'm actually you know uh these rare weapons are actually quite rare and sometimes they could be the really good plus 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 even early on i can get a plus 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 um, I'm not liking it because it just makes the game a little bit more easier um, to go ahead and go and do and everything. I just don't like that kind of stuff, you know, especially on my like you know, mode. Yeah, I like the feel that these weapons aren't just gated behind. Oh, these weapons only spawn if you're fighting assault mechs because no one will put a good laser on another mech. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I, I'm glad about that. Um, it, it feels more coherent to me. The thing also about the black market. I'm not sure exactly, but you know, each faction has their own faction store, and yeah, I think no. the black market is the equivalent of the pirate or plan, you know, periphery, uh, planetary government, you know, kind of uh, store. And the stores have have to have special stuff because, particularly for factions, you're working forever to be friends with them if the random number generator smiles on you. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, definitely. But still, I'm having a fun time with yeah. it. Though, don't get me wrong. Yeah. My thing, at least, um, perhaps, uh, I'm not sure you know, this will ever happen, but uh, my biggest change to career mode to make it a lot more fun would just be simply, I arrive on a planet, it has several different factions, and I'm just basically saying, hey, guys, I'm I'm coming down to this planet. I want to fight for Liao against the planetary government. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or whatever. Like, I'm looking for these missions. Can these missions please turn up? more often like it makes at least some sense for or at least it should make sense for me to you know be buddying up to one faction and that faction being the guys giving me lots of missions rather than me turning up to a planet and hoping that the random missions that were on the message board were left by my friends now now one thing i think ian um uh pitched out there was uh they're going to be putting in the urban um um the urban like expansion is the warhammer and the marauder Mm -hmm. correct um, I specifically said past the urban warfare yeah. expansion. Oh, okay, past, so past, okay. Probably, it's prob- so the Unseen are probably going to start to come out with the third Battletech expansion and beyond. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. In Metcon, they did, though, confirm that uh, in the far future, we are going to have the Unseen. Um, the, uh... Yeah, I was just... Sorry, go ahead. Um, well, Bob, you could speak to this a little bit as well. I was just going to say, you know, before we move on too quickly, uh, the flashpoints themselves, you have at least played the one they gave at Metcon. Yeah, yeah. Um, would you want to give your thoughts on that before I give mine? You know, um, the the second mission was where you had to defend the base, and uh, that was mm-hmm. pretty easy to do. Like, um, like I actually quit after that, though, because it, it was just kind of easy um, knocking out those mechs, because all I had to do was run down to the first point, kill those four mechs that are there, and then I left my two um, my uh, my two learn mechs like on top or the long range ones. Then the ones on the back side of the mountainside, I just killed those things like real quick. It, it was kind of easy, and I quit after that. 
Mm-hmm. Um, um, like I think though, like the flashpoint, I do like how it's three. Uh, I think it's like three missions, right? Uh, two missions, that particular one. Uh, okay, two missions. I, I mean, I, I quit after that though. It, it was just way too easy. Mm-hmm. But I, I mean, yeah, overall yeah. though, like, I, I like the idea. Don't get me wrong. I love the idea, like of it though. Yeah. Um. What I'd say, at least, uh, what me and Bat Dark also came across though on that mission was it's a defend the base mission. Yeah. And depending on how you move to start with, the um, you know, you take a turn to move, the enemy take a turn to move, you move and get in radar contact. They, you know, um, uh, you know, both sides uh, see each other. Everyone takes their first turn. I move up to try and see them. I start shooting at them, and the ones at the far back just start shooting the base. Yeah. Yeah. I know. <laughs> and, I was kind of pissed uh, off about like, that. Yeah, me and Bat Duck had like an issue where the base, like we already lose one building at the very first turn before we could even see the enemy. Yeah. Um, and in fact, at least uh, for me, when I first played it, um, yeah, because I was basically doing I- Iron Man. Um, well, when I was at uh, Metcon, was the whole base got destroyed because first I pushed down into the valley and you know uh, absolutely gank the lance that spawned down there. That's what I did too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but I didn't leave the learn mechs up top. So okay. then everyone has to slowly scramble up, scramble up the hill whilst all the mechs that, on turn three, spawned on top of the hill. You know, you, you have three turns to destroy a lance, and then another lance appears, and as soon as they appear, they start shooting the base. And not only that, there's a third lance. You know, half of them are tanks, but, you know, there's a third group spawned far over the... Um, on the other side of the hill. Yeah. Like, uh, my concerns, at least, about uh, Flashpoint and these missions was that PGI, uh, sorry, Halo Brain Schemes, uh, has issues with difficulty and often overtune things to be too difficult. Sometimes and, they do, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and at least, uh, you know, I, I know what I'm doing in the game, but I lost all my base buildings because I didn't gank a lance full of heavies and mediums in three turns. <laughs> it took me four turns. <laughs> and then the lance above, you know, I, have a, I, I need a turn or two to actually run up the hill. And you know they're shooting at the base, and and and, and I, I engage all of them. They're not shooting the base, but there's a third lance that spawned on turn three that's lurming the base, and I can't even see them on my radar. <laughs> they're so far away. Well, always the base defense ones are the hardest ones to do because I'm mm-hmm. literally like you could be sitting right in front of punching, you know, like nut punching the uh, the atlas that's you know right in front of you, but he'll ignore you and just kill the base. So the AI is a little bit yeah. kind of like uh, iffy. But, uh, but I mean, like overall, yeah. though, the game, all I mean, overall, the game stuff is great. I, I mean, anything Hairbrand Screams does now, I'm just a big fan of because you do a really good job. Yeah. And one of the greatest things they actually like implemented was they was being a UI, you, uh, just you're, you're able to move your mechs in the mech bay, which is one of the coolest things I, I've ever seen in this thing. And Mitch, yeah. Mitch even loves that as well. Yeah, but I would yeah, just say yeah. though, um, I did have, of course, uh, I did manage to do this flashpoint again. Um, when I did the campaign, you know, yeah. in career mode, yeah. and at that point, at least the the number of skulls is like two and a half, and my lance is two and a half because I have a lance of mediums. Um, first mission cleared easy peasy. It's just an escort mission. Yeah. Um, yeah. oddly enough, though, all the all the re- all the APCs, of course, just in classic uh, convoy style, go. 100 miles an hour towards the mechs. <laughs> and I'm sprinting behind them like, wait, I'm supposed to be your escort. <laughs> so it was a bit hairy. Oh, that yeah. One. yeah. Um, and then the second mission, you know, it's, um, they replace one of my mechs with a hatchet man, a stock hatchet man. <laughs> I'm using the stock hatchet man. It's not, it, and it's actually not too bad. It's not bad at all. Just got to really like, well, you, know, you know, use it in though. In terms of game, in terms of game balance, though, I have a lance of mediums, um, and immediately from turn one, there's another lance of mediums I have to kill within three turns, and then the naval lance spawns on top. You know, it's eight mediums versus four. The yeah. numbers are really stacked against me. Oh, and there's another two mediums climbing up the hill with a demolisher and a Shrek PP. No, sorry, not a uh, SRM carrier and a PPC uh, Shrek. Well, just be happy you had a uh, um, had a. Um... Cyclops, man, mine died on the first one, so I didn't I, have I, a Cyclops. I, I'm saying, I'm saying, I'm playing through career mode without, you know, oh, all okay. the special mechs. You yeah. know, in uh, in Metcon, they gave you a very advanced lance. They yeah. gave you very good mechs to like um, a, a much heavier lance than what you 
can't, you know, would sort of have at that point in the game. Yeah. So I, in that point of the game, I'm facing two and a half to three times my tonnage. Um, and, you know, the, the reinforcements that overwhelm me arrive three turns into the game. <laughs> Yeah. So um, I actually did manage to save all the buildings. I found at least if you put enough fire into each of them, they will aggro onto you rather than the buildings. Oh, I didn't and, notice that actually. Yeah. Uh, so uh, the hatchet man was absolutely garbage in this situation because you know its its biggest thing is its melee or its it's got a good shooting attack, but it gets hot quickly. Because all my mechs are jump jetting all the time because they have to dodge the firepower of two lances of medium mechs. Yep. And <laughs> definitely get those points. You know, get the pips, basically. And one of the things, too, is like yeah. using the new skill system. It's actually not too bad. I love it, actually. The uh, yeah. um, uh, the one thing, though, like I've been noticing, though, I've been just hanging out in forest just to get the 40%, like with Bulwark. So, you know, I'll jump into forest, but when I'm on the moon missions or, or just in like in deserts, there's really not much out there. And th that's been hurting me. Yeah. That there are uh, whirlwinds. If you yeah, whirlwinds. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 The actors cover. But yeah, um, what I found is just, it, yeah, at least at that point, the flashpoint mission, particularly since this is mission two and you might have struggled with the first one, was incredibly difficult. And having the hatchet man pilot guy um, was a huge like um what's it called it's like it's shackling it's, holding, yeah. it's, it's yeah. a huge disadvantage it's holding you back this is not the mech you need in this circumstance you need a mech that could jump jet around and keep its distance meleeing is incredibly bad yeah. <laughs> in the end because the hatchet man didn't have bulwark guess who got focused <laughs> no, oh yeah yeah i know he, and, he yeah you know that's one thing about the ai that noticed like when i was playing the uh the uh, stock mode it's like always the guy who doesn't have more gets gets focus fired so so i use that to my yeah. advantage and run him back and then you know, you know they're, they're like run in a position they shouldn't be in then i'll hammer that mech you know and that's yeah. the thing i wish they actually would change the irony for me at least with this flashpoint is um, oh, we're, we're going to move materials to this mech hangar because we're putting together, you know, a, a top secret new mech. It's going to be awesome. And look at it. It's the hatchet man. Now it's in your lance. And even though the, the only mech that's kind of dead is um, uh, the hatchet man and it sucked. Yeah. Um, at the end of the mission, they go, oh, wow, the hatchet man was awesome. <laughs> I love the hatchet, man. And I was just like, that was the worst mech. I got it killed on purpose. I I don't have it for my uh, for my customized uh, campaign, but my stock my stock campaign, I, I definitely do have it. What do you think of uh, Mitch versus Jordan, though? Um, Jordan Wiseman for the uh, for the like one on one match. I thought that was awesome, man. I I'm Mitch, and they know how to work a crowd, dude. They know how to work a crowd, and it was just so cool to go watch these guys fight each other. And Mitch is such a comedian. I love that guy. He's so funny. Funny tidbit: Mitch is actually an actor, or really? at least was an actor before he got into gaming. Oh, I never knew yeah. that actually. Wow. He, yeah, he's I, a real nice uh, guy. It, their battle in last Met MetCon was a highlight of the whole con, and this time they also put on a pretty good show. Oh yeah, yeah. Basically, uh, um, they also got it, um, and they got technical advisors from the audience. Uh, one was Rock and I don't know who the other guy was. He was like the the developer of of AI or something like that, though, right? Who was helping Mitch? It, it, it just makes so much sense because both of the, both of those people are terrible at that game. Looking <laughs> <laughs> forward to watching the fight. But that was a really good idea. They got people from the audience, and I love that fact they did that. And Mitch, the best scene was, this is Battle Tag. He screamed really loud, and then nothing happened. <laughs> it was so funny. <laughs> <laughs> it was so cool. And then they kept on doing Death from Above like the whole time. It was good, though. They did a good job on that. And they also raised a lot for charity. I raised, I think, $1,000, correct? Seven hundred or so, yeah. Okay, seven hundred. Yeah, and a thousand. Yeah, it's around that number. Yeah, they had a charity. They had like you could purchase tickets for five bucks and get a ticket to win. Like the, uh, I would love to get that jacket. Oh my god, I would love to get that only jacket. Thing, yeah, only thing I'd say is though, of course, um, they had what a hundred bucks per mech. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then, like six mechs fell, so you know, <laughs> they made a substantial co contribution to that uh, charity. Oh, yeah. But, you know, that I, uh, hats off to them. That's, uh, you know, very good in the spirit of uh, a charity and putting on a show. 
Definitely, mm-hmm. definitely. So uh, they amazing, and I can't wait to meet him next time. Mm-hmm. Be really good. But yeah, um, so Flashpoint is for nineteen ninety nine. You can probably find it on sale different other places, and then, and then always Steam has it on sale as well too. So you pick up BattleTech if you guys yeah. can. For for the most part, I would say um, if, if you're on the fence about Flashpoint, uh, perhaps wait and see how future DLCs are, because this one is quite threadbare for the most part. Flashpoints take a long time uh, for you to get to between Flashpoint to Flashpoint, and if you had issues with the difficulty before, there's going to be even greater difficulties uh, going forward with Flashpoint missions. It seems. I say purchase it <laughs> just because it's good. Uh, I mean, I'd also say purchase it, but then again, I'm a fanboy. So yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm going to be more conservative and say if you really like those new mechs, go and buy it. Or if you really like the idea of flashpoints, go and buy it. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I just, uh, for a value uh, perspective, um, these these DLCs are quite expensive. And, um, you know, you're not paying your money and instantly getting a whole campaign, you know, a, 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 you know, a continuous experience to play through. You're getting occasional extra missions. And not only that, those 30 hours of gameplay have to be done through multiple playthroughs because there's flashpoints locked behind being allied to certain factions. Yeah, yeah. And there's like, I, I don't know how many are locked to certain factions, but let's just say there's eight or nine flashpoints locked behind certain factions. Each of those is half an hour long. It's... You know, let's just say 20 hours roughly of general uh, flashpoints and 10 hours locked behind each playthrough. And each of all of those are, you know, through playthroughs that take hundreds of hours to complete. (laughs) So it's incredibly spread out. It's very pricey for what it is. The base game is like for me, like 35 quid and a flashpoint, you know, just the DLC on its own is 15 quid. It's worth half the base game. I don't know. I'm a fanboy, so I'll purchase it. No problem. <laughs> you know, basically, I'm yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm a big fan of these guys because they do great work. And so, like, I'll rather put my money towards a company that actually does great work and has a passion for the game than a company, um, say, I got really pissed off at, like, uh, 76, like Bethesda. Mm-hmm. So, so like, I, I really, I would yeah. definitely, I would definitely purchase it. If you guys, if you guys are fanboys of Battletech, definitely support Hairbrain Schemes. I mean- um, has anyone followed the most recent DLC that came out for Destiny 2? No, no. What, what's I mean, Destiny 2? What's Destiny 2? <laughs> <laughs> it's it's one of those crappy games you got for free, Bob. Oh, okay. So I, think, um, I think Flashpoint is very much sort of in the same vein as that because the new DLC they did for Destiny 2, um, it's basically adding more late game stuff and loot which 95% of players can't even access, or at least they have to do a long grind to get yeah. to that point. And that's almost somewhat, uh, I feel, with the Flashpoint. It's a lot of, you have to do a lot of work to get to new content. Um, and if you're putting down, you know, like 15 quid, what's it, like 30 Canadian dollars or 20 uh, US dollars, it's a lot of money for a little bit of extra content here and there. Yeah. So Battletech, Metcon, PGI, harebrained schemes, everything was really good. Um, it's some some concerns. Don't get me wrong about different things going on, like my Warrior Five, um, you know, and uh, PGI. It was it was kind of like I, I I don't know myself though, but it felt like PGI was just really kind of boring. But uh, but then Hairbrain schemes, obviously, man, awesome, did a great job and I'm presenting their stuff. Catalyst Games as well too. Um, kind of upset about the uh, about the uh, box sets. I wanted to purchase one. Because now I gotta I gotta pay shipping, which kind of blows. But anyways, but yeah, I really enjoyed everything. I, I had a good time, good time meeting people. I, I met Simon from Battlestar Galactica, Silent Number Four. That was awesome uh, for for uh, right before we did some whiskey tasting. I'm very excited about that. I got pictures. I'll I'll go show them up here too. But uh, good, good, good times, man. Good times. Ian Lush, any last thoughts? No, nah, I think it's all good. I think we went over everything. This has been a really yeah. long podcast. So yeah, I think we went <laughs> yeah. over all the things. So yeah, yeah. My, my summer with my con. I'm sad I wasn't be. I'm I wasn't there, but I yeah, so... don't think I've missed too much. <laughs> uh, yeah, I would say at least uh, the fun of going to a con like these is you go and meet lots of people in the community. And oddly yeah. enough, at least I found a lot of people were so busy just chitter chattering away, uh, you know, enjoying each other's company. You you know, you actually are less in tune with what's going on on stage than yeah, yeah. 
yeah. anybody else. Uh, you know, mm. like I, 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 at the time, you know, the, when they were doing competitive stuff, I just took the time to meet people and chat about stuff. <laughs> so I, I know less about the competitive than pro- that probably people who were just sitting back watching the stream. One of the coolest yeah. things I met two people that that um, you know, Bat Duck and Biter. I, I met you and damn, you're tall, dude. But uh, but it, it was a lot of fun though. It, it was good meeting you though, man. Yeah, but um, me and my girlfriend were taller than old Pop and Bat Duck. Yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> So, by the, well, by the one last question, did you actually use any of your post-its? I, I did. As in, what do you mean use? Well, did you glue them to the screens of the players and so on? Uh, no, no, oh I didn't. Oh, my God. That. <laughs> that would be good. I should put but it on my note, name tag. Yeah, funny little note about the MechWarrior 5 demo was everyone was playing the Thunderbolt because in the Mech and Pilot Select screen, you were always in the bottom left, regardless of what things you're clicking on or what one you clicked on at first. So everyone played the Thunderbolt. And I kept asking people, uh, did you even use the LRMs? And they were like, I had LRMs? Yeah, it was a weapon group five. There were five weapon groups. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that, yeah. I was yeah. just using one and two. <laughs> You're right about that because I didn't know what what weapon group five was, and I was going through the mouse buttons, you know, trying to figure out like like which one. Then you said, "Yeah, it's button number five. I was like, "Oh, okay, it's number five. Duh. Yeah. Yeah. So the people reading <clears throat> the thing actually, um, they took strips of paper and stuck it to the screen, saying, "Oh, you, you know, um, move the mech to the leftmost side if you want to play it." And also, by the way, press like enter or something to actually see what the all the buttons are. No so, thermal vision. Good. I said. Well, hopefully next year uh, I'll be able to make it. So yeah, I hope yeah, try to get to definitely be cool. Yeah, so going to the con itself, it's about meeting all the people in the community. If you're really connected with lots of people in the community, you know all the streamers and whatnot. It's a fun experience. If not, though, you could just watch it on stream, and you're not missing too much, yeah. other than enjoying all the technical details firsthand. Well, um, but one thing I will definitely do is get the VIP ticket, though. I will definitely get a VIP next time because mm-hmm. food would look awesome. <laughs> and otherwise, at least uh, the majority of the you know Hebron schemes, Catalyst, uh, Piranha games did not actually have much to show for um, this MechCon. Yeah, it was a bit light on content, honestly, um, and a lot of it, uh, it will come later. You know, we don't get any info of the new upcoming upcoming DLCs for BattleTech. We MechWarrior Five long down the line, and yeah. maybe box sets and maps in the future. Uh, <laughs> it's, so. a, it's a lot of this will become later. So cool. Who wants to do the wrap up then, or or the uh, or the outro? Your voice sounds healthy, Bob. Go and do it. I'm I'm drinking tea, so so it's it's getting better. Um, yeah. So, anyways, thank you for watching episode 64 of um, our MechCon wrap up here. It is two hours, and thank you for watching. Thank you for hearing on the uh, sound on SoundCloud as well. So, stay tuned for episode 65 next week, next Monday, or the Monday after mm-hmm. next. Have a good night. See you guys on the battlefield. Bye bye. Larg. Larg. Oh, yeah, we got Biter E and a Larsh. Yep. <laughs> the hatchet bat's so good. Look at its corpse. <laughs> See you guys later. <laughs> <laughs>